People talk about three completely different biological processes as if they're the same thing, growth, remodeling, and degeneration. I already mentioned growth and remodeling in my previous videos. If you confuse these processes, you'll think adults can grow bones. You'll think exercise or habits change structure. You'll think before and after photos prove biology. They don't. This video exists to separate these processes. Confusing them is one of the biggest reasons why most online advice is useless, temporary, or harmful in the long run. Before we get into the video, I want to quickly explain where this channel is going. From now on, I'll be focusing on long form documentary style videos, deep dives into biology, development, health, and why certain things actually work or don't. These are the kind of videos I wish existed when I first started learning about this. I'll also be posting on Patreon and is completely free. I'll be using it as a place to post extended material and breakdowns that are too niche for YouTube. If that ever changes in the future, I'll be upfront about it. But right now, it's open to everyone. You can use the link in the description. The single tier is optional for those who want to directly support the channel. If you ever want to reach me directly, my Gmail is linked in the channel description. If you have studies, evidence, disagreements, or something genuinely thoughtful to share, that's the best way to contact me. I want the information to be as clear and easy to follow as possible, especially with technical topics like this. All right, let's get into the video. I've seen people online claiming they grew their chin after a certain age. We see doctors dismissing structural changes as genetics. Let's define growth precisely. Growth is coordinated developmental expansion of biological structure, driven by cell proliferation and developmental signaling, which increases overall dimensions and proportional capacity, not strengthening, not adaptation. So that means new tissue volume is added and the overall structural ceiling increases. This will happen during developmental windows, not adulthood, and is driven by nutrition and hormones in order to reach your genetic potential. These are not optional. No active developmental signaling means no structural expansion. This applies to your height, jaw length, facial width, cranial size, rib cage, and limb proportions. Once those systems shut down, the body exits coordinated developmental growth. At that point, structural expansion is no longer biologically available under normal conditions. Primary growth is a phase. Growth is not meant to last forever. If humans continued growing indefinitely, our organs would desynchronize, mechanical stability would fail, and our energy demands would be unsustainable. That's the life cycle. There is no habit, posture, exercise, or nutrient that reverses developmental course. At this point, someone always brings up acromegaly. Oh, what about people with acromegaly? Their jaws grow as adults, their hands grow, their faces change. Doesn't that prove growth can happen after development? No, and this is where definitions matter. Acromegaly does not prove normal adult growth is possible. It proves what happens when the body is pushed into a pathological state it was never designed to sustain. The most common example people use is Andre the Giant. So let's talk about that. Andre the Giant had acromegaly caused by pituitary tumor that produced excessive amounts of growth hormone for years. By adulthood, his long bone growth had already largely completed and the continued changes people associate with growth were acromegalic. It is a disease. The changes seen in acromegaly are not coordinated developmental growth. They are pathological overproduction of tissue through bone thickening and soft tissue hypertrophy without reopening growth plates or restoring normal developmental signaling. This process does not reopen growth plates, restore developmental timing, or produce proportional skeletal design, which is why acromegalic changes are often distorted rather than developmentally optimal. Remodeling is where most of you live. Unlike growth, remodeling happens until the day you die. It's the replacement and rearrangement of existing tissue without increasing the structural ceiling. This happens through resorption and formation. It exists to maintain strength, adapt density to load, preserve integrity, and repair micro damage. Remodeling works within the structure created by growth. This is adaptation. I'm sure most of you have heard of Wolf's Law. Julius Wolf stated that bone will adapt to the loads under which it's placed. Wolf's Law does not say that bone grows without limit or developmental structures can be rewritten after maturity. 
It describes how bone tissue adapts to mechanical load, not how to grow new skeletal frameworks. People try to twist what he said. Bone responds to stress in very specific, very constrained ways. When stress is applied, the skeleton adapts by adjusting bone density in the regions experiencing the stress. What it does not do is change the overall dimensions of a bone in a meaningful, directional way. If it allowed bones to lengthen or expand freely in adults, athletes would keep getting taller, skulls would keep widening, and orthopedic implants would fail constantly. That does not happen because that is not what Wolf's Law describes. I know, minor geometric adaptations can occur at muscle attachment sites under extreme loading, but these changes are local, constrained, and do not constitute meaningful structural redesign. In a healthy body, the rate of resorption equals the rate of formation. So, when resorption is greater than formation, that's when degeneration occurs. It is the loss of structure and function. Degeneration is not inevitable at a fixed rate. It often starts as an adaptive remodeling to a bad signal. Basically, you accelerate it with your lifestyle choices. If your body is low on calcium or magnesium, it will not have the materials required for bone remodeling. This is really bad. People look at an aging face and see sagging skin. What they are actually seeing is skeletal resorption. The foundation is shrinking. Most transformations are recovery from degeneration. And this matters because it defines what is possible and what is cope. These processes are biologically distinct, even though remodeling and degeneration can occur simultaneously. Growth is developmental, remodeling is maintenance, and degeneration happens when maintenance fails. I hope this video clarified things for you you already know this won't be the last time we talk about it. Let me know your thoughts on this and what I missed in the comments. Thanks for watching.